Okay, so welcome to lecture 12. Um, this is all about how to solve quadratic equations. Um, so I want to encourage you guys to encourage each other to uh, attend, to view the webinar and to look on the YouTube channel as well. So I put plenty of links to our YouTube channel all over the place on Moodle. So hopefully you guys will remember it if you're stuck on stuff. And always remember that I have the virtual office. And uh, I'm there Tuesday and Thursday afternoons. I'm, I'm, if I'm not logged in, all you got to do is, is get in touch with me. And I'll, I probably, it probably logged itself out. But uh, I try to stay logged in if I can on Tuesdays and Thursdays. If you need me to meet with you in the virtual office on any other day, I totally can do that. we got to set it up. It's by appointment because I have some other things I got to do, you know, like grocery shop and feed my family. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, seriously, though, I'm here for you guys. You need help? Let me know. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so we're talking about quadratic equations this week. And so um, what we're doing here is um, this is a quadratic. Okay, so what we have here is called the standard form of a quadratic equation. Okay, and it's when we have this, the, the descending order on the left side, you see you have your x squared term, your x, and your constant term set equal to zero. Okay, all right. Now, of course, x is the variable or the unknown. Okay, we don't know it yet, but today we're going to learn how to find it in a lot of examples. Okay, what we're doing here is we're pointing out A, B, and C. Okay, if you see the, the way I have standard form, here is A is the coefficient on x squared, right? B is the coefficient on x, and C is just the constant term. Okay, so we're going to just, let's start out by just pointing out what is A, B, and C. You're going to want to do this for a couple of the skills we're going to learn today. Okay, here we can see that A is the coefficient here, 2, B is 5, and C is 3. You're going to want to be able to point this out. Sometimes we're given this version of a quadratic. It is in standard form. It just does not have a constant. C would be equal to 0. Okay, so let me kind of scroll down a little bit so you can see. Okay. So we have A, which is understood, right? So A would be 1. Okay, so A equal to 1, right? And we do have a B. Careful your signs, right? There's a minus 3 means that B will be negative 3. All right? And then C is equal to 0. Since there's no C there, there's no constant term. C is 0. It is there. It's just equal to 0. Okay? Now, finally, this example here. Notice it does not have an x squared term, right? A is equal to 0, right? In other words, if we put it in a, a form of quadratic, we'd, we'd have something like this on the front. We would have, oh, let me make my bearings, where's my pen? Okay, we would have like 0x squared on the front, you see, but we don't have that. So A is 0, which means it's not quadratic. It's linear, right? This is a linear equation. So it doesn't even belong in this section. So you may be tricked kind of by doing that, by seeing something like that. Okay, so we're going to look at some methods of solving the quadratic equations. <clears throat> okay, and so the first thing we're going to look at, well, let me just show you real quick. We're going to look at factoring today, all right? Factoring using also coupled with what's called the zero factor property. Different textbooks like to call this different things. So if you are Googling how to do this or getting help online, you may see it called the zero factor property. I think your book calls it the zero property. Some books call it the zero product property. It, it's the same property, and uh, I'll get to that in a sec. Um, completing the square, we're going to learn a really basic version of that, and I'm going to give you guys some great news about your homework that I'm going to abbreviate, okay? I'm going to really, really abbreviate your homework a lot today. So you guys will have a lot less to do today if you haven't done it yet. 
And if you've already done it, if I see a few people did submit it, but if you've already done those parts, you're going to be better off in the future. We'll have some things that will need parts of that skill. So you're okay. It's good to have that practice, but you're going to be having to do a little bit less today. And so we're going to look at the square root method. Okay, so you will have to do that one and the quadratic formula. Which, by the way, the quadratic formula can be used to solve any quadratic equation. Any quadratic equation. Okay, so anything we can put in standard form. You know, if you guys forget how to use a certain prop, a, a, one of these methods, and you do remember the quadratic formula, that's why it's so important. It can solve any equation. So we'll get to that kind in a bit. I'll probably spend more time on that one, but I'm going to zoom through these first few methods, okay? Now let's take a look at the factoring method. Okay, let me scroll down some more. Oh, I have a question. Hold on. One quick. Can you give me up on the word problems? Oh, definitely, definitely, okay? Yeah, you got it, Megan. I will get to that in a bit. Let me get, we have to go through these methods to learn how to do that. I will promise you I'll get to one. If it's the last thing I do. So, um, yeah, today we'll definitely get to some word problems. Okay. All right, factoring method. Now, we've been, just finished, like, covering factoring, okay? <clears throat> There's a lot of good videos. I did add a lot of uh, help on that on the YouTube channel. And I can help you guys if we sit one-on-one. -on -one. There's a great way, if you're still struggling with factoring trinomials, please let me know. Okay, because there's something I can show you. There's a trick. I'm actually working on a video today that will help you if you're still struggling. I'll be posting that probably after I post this on the YouTube channel. or I'll put a link as well on our, our website. Okay, um, so the zero factor property. Here I am up here, okay? Let me get it highlighted here. What it says is that if you have two things multiplied... Okay, so if we multiply A and B, these A and B are the factors, right? And we know if we're told that it's all their product is zero, okay, then A has to be zero or B is equal to zero, right? One of these things must be zero for the answer to be zero. For the multiplication of the two things to be zero, one of them has to be zero. So that's the zero product or the zero factor property. Either way, you can call it what you want. So um, here's the deal, okay? We will have something in, you want to put it into standard form. Notice the problem I have here is in standard form to begin with, okay, before they factor it out. So you do want to begin with the standard form. You want to get zero on one side. If there's not a zero on the right, you want to make zero happen on the right or on whatever side. Is you need a zero on one side for the zero factor property to work. Then you factor the left side. The non-zero side gets factored. Okay, and then what happens is we have A and B. Okay, and let me kind of point out what's going on here. We have A times B, right, equal to zero. This is our zero factor property, which means either this factor can be zero, right, or this zero this factor can be zero, okay? So we set them equal to zero independently, okay? So you see that x plus 7 can be zero. We kind of actually write that out now. x plus 7 can be zero or x minus 6. And notice these are very simple linear, two separate linear equations to solve. And you solve those independently of one another. And there's your solutions, negative 7 and 6, okay? How can I check my answer? Of course, you can go to the side and you can check it this way. You take them one at a time, okay? For x equal to negative 7, we're going to plug a negative 7 into the quadratic, the original formula, equation. So look, we had x squared plus x, everywhere I have an x, I'm going to open parentheses, minus 42 equal to 0. And put in your negative 7 after the fact. Open those parentheses. This is where, this is why I've been teaching y'all to check this way, where you open the parentheses first, 
then you go plug in your negative 7, especially with negative values and a square. You want to open those parentheses first and then go back and plug in your value. So now what? Negative 7 squared is going to be positive 49, right? This will be minus 7 minus 42 equals 0. Now look, 49 minus 7, right, is what? What? 42 minus 42, bringing that one down. So we do get 0 equal to 0, so it checks out. So yes, that is a solution. So solution, okay? And so you, can, you would need to go check x equal to 6 as well. So let me scroll down a little bit, and I will check that one now. So look, so x equal to 6. You want to take them independent of one another, like I'm saying. And you can't, you don't want to put negative 7 in one, one parenthesis and 6 in another. That's not going to work for you. You want to open a template for each one separately and go in and plug in the same value. So we have 36 plus 6, excuse me, trying to write a 6, minus 42. 36 plus 6 is 42, minus this 42. So 0 is 0, so this one checks out as well, okay? So that's how we can check our solutions. You want to get a true statement, right? In the end, you want to get true statements, right? That's how we can tell you know, they are a solution, okay? So um, let's go ahead and practice one or two, okay? And so I'm kind of trying to zoom through, so I may not get to use all these examples I have here for everything. I might bring some down to the next problems, okay? But let's take the first one at least, okay? So here's what, let me do this. Let's see. Let me take a picture of this, okay, in that way. I'll save it, and I'm going to kind of cover the rest of this real quick. And so um, we're going to do the first one. I want you guys to work on 2x squared minus x minus 15 equal to 0. I'd like you to, to um, try to factor that left side, okay? So we have the 0 on the right side, okay? So I want you guys to factor that. Factor the left side for me. Okay, so we know how this is going to factor. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we want to have, you want to have um, two binomials, right, equal to zero. So let's do the AC method, okay? I want to show you guys how you can use, the, real quick, how you can use AC method to split up the middle term, okay? This is kind of interesting. We're going to factor... 2x squared minus x minus 15. Okay, so the AC method, let me make myself some room here. AC method says to multiply a times c, right? So 2, and we'll worry about the signs after the fact, okay? Don't worry about the minus on the 15 just yet. That'll help us suss out our signs later. But we want factors of 30, right? 2 times 15. So AC method says this, right? We want to answer this question. What are factors of 2 times 15, right? Equal to 30. All right, whose, let's see, whose Let's see, uh, whose sum, let's just say they add to the middle term, right? Now, actually, I'm sorry, whose difference, I'm, I'll tell you where I get that from in a sec. Whose difference is 1, okay? Get that out of there. So let's write out the factors of 30 real quick, okay? All right, so factors of 30 would be what? Let's see. So 30 would be what? We have 1 times 30, 2 times 15, what? 3 times 10, what? 5 times 6. There you go. 5 and 6 have a difference of 1. Now I'm going to show you what's going to happen now. We're going to use this 5 and 6 
to split up the middle term. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so check this out. If you well, let me see. Let me wait. I'm gonna do the whole grouping thing. So let's go ahead and write this. We're gonna write two x squared, and we're gonna write this. Okay, let me put, get my red thick pen here. We're going to write a 5, and don't put a sign in front, just write 5x and write 6x, okay? So that's how we're going to use that there, okay? Put your minus 15, right? So we're splitting this guy up. We need these two things to come to, to combine to give me a negative x, right? So look, we need them to combine to give me this negative x. So which one has to have the minus sign on it, right? The larger of the two. And it would not matter if you wrote the 6 first or the 5 first, okay? So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do this. I'm going to use what's called grouping to factor this out. This is kind of groovy. I'm going to put parentheses around the first two. And you always want to have plus between the video I'm going to post later is going to show you guys use how to use grouping to fact this whole thing I'm doing right now. There will be a separate video up today showing you how to do this. What I've done is I thought of this as plus a negative because you always want to have plus between the two groupings. Okay, grouping to factor. Okay, so now from each grouping we want to factor out something right from what is a common monomial factor in this set of parentheses what can I take out to the front of that they both have X okay so we'll take an X out and then what's left over here would be what 2x plus 5 okay and now the second grouping okay what do these two things have in common definitely want to take the negative out because we want the leading positive coefficient, right? So definitely when you have that middle minus that you have to take care of, you're going to be factoring a subtract a minus out, out of the second grouping. We, and if you look at this, look at the 2x plus 5 we just got from the first grouping. We want those binomials to match, right? The leftovers, we want them to match up so we can finish the problem. So we have the minus, and they both have a 3. 6 and 15 have 3. Okay? So we go ahead and fact, filter out the negative 3, and we end up with what? 2x. It's working. It's working. And what? Plus, right? Because we're factoring out a negative, so all the signs inside go opposite. And so filter the 3 from 15, and we have a 5. So look what's happening. Now I have what's called a common binomial factor, right? This guy can be factored out from the first term. Now, what, let me show you something. We have the first grouping. This is a term. This is a term. It would be as though I had xy minus 3y. Does that make sense? So you're just factoring out what, I'm, what I've just called the y. Okay. So now this is equal to what? Let's take out the 2x plus 5. And then what's left over is this guy minus this guy. That becomes my leftovers. This takes a little longer than just, you know, using the AC method and putting directly into the parentheses the way we looked at it before. But you will not get it wrong if you learn this. Okay, so here's my factorization. Let's go back to the problem now. We're using factoring to solve. Okay, so now we know our factorization is 2x plus 5 and x minus 3. So now each of these, okay, has to be set equal to 0, back to the, the actual 0 factor property. And so actually what I'm going to do is write them a little higher so I can kind of have room for that. Ah. Okay. Try to, anyway. Let's see. Oh, let me see. What can I do? Okay, so I'm going to try to do that. I'll just write it this way. Okay, so I'm going to have, comparing it to the AC method, we now have A times B equal to 0. So now I want to set them each equal to 0. I'm going to set the 2x plus 5 equal to 0, 
and then I'm going to set the x minus 3 equal to 0. Okay, so now I have what, 2x plus 5 could be 0. Okay, so that goes here, and then the x minus 3. You can put the word or if you'd like to, but you really don't need to. Okay, just solve them independent of one another, right? So now we're going to just work on the left one, right? We'll just go down the line here. Let's see. And I'm just going to kind of section it off for us. Okay. And then let me work the green area right here. Okay. So what? We'll subtract 5 from both sides. And now 2x is equal to negative 5. Divide by 2. And x is equal to negative 5 halves. Okay. And then the green area now, this is quite simple. We just add 3 to both sides, and x is equal to, oops, I opened up the font. Sorry. Okay, and so now, let's see. X plus 3. Why do I keep doing that? Stop. Okay. <laughs> x is equal to 3. Get out of here. Okay, there it goes. All right, so there's my two solutions. Right here, I have one of them here, okay, and one of them here. There's my solutions. You're going to have two solutions, and uh, when we get into graphing these, you'll see why, okay? We're look these are also called the zeros of this equation, or the function, okay? And uh, we're going to get into that a bit. Oh, let's just, for now, we know that these are the two solutions from my quadratic equation, 2x squared minus x minus 15 is equal to 0. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, okay, I am going to uh, do this. We're going to go into a section in a bit. We're going to have plenty of practice with factoring in a bit. For now, let me talk about the completing the square portion, though, just to kind of help you understand what I, what I do want you to know how to do, just to kind of help you have things a little easier is this this right here this block I have right here okay so let me move this too this is as far as we need to go with this method since it's not the most efficient method of solving quadratic equations and that's widely known in the math world so <clears throat> the reason you would want to know how to do this and basically what I have here in this square what I have in this little square is the completing the square all done for you into a formula instead of a method. Okay, so uh, the point of it is to put it into eventually what we will call in the next chapter vertex form. Okay, and so what we're trying to see would be these two values. Okay, all right, so here's D. If you can pick out the A, B, and the C, then you can put something into this form. Okay, and so let me see. Let's take, let me do this. Let's see. We will do this example really quick. I'm going to take the same thing we just did, the same problem, and I want to show you. 15 equals 0. Okay, so let's go here, completing the square. Separate, this is just another method that people can use, <clears throat> all right, to put it into this form. And I'll show you the point in the next method, okay? This, well, I didn't type square root formula. Okay, I'll do that next, okay. All right, so anyway, so we want to put it into this form. Here's how it goes. We need to find D. Now look, every time, it, when you go to use a quadratic formula to, you're going to want to write a little list of A, B, and C, kind of extract them from the equation. It makes it easier for you to plug into the formula when you get the coefficients out of view from the X's, okay? Because the it's not correct. It is incorrect to plug in an X into the quadratic formula or these formulas. Notice these A's, B's, and C's or not anything to do with X, right? We just take, we want to extract the A, the B, and the C and start using the formulas, okay? So be careful with that. This is what I'm trying to say, watch out. 
Okay, so now that we have A, B, and C written out, okay, because there's two, there's negative one, right? Remember, there's understood one there. Okay, minus 15 is our constant. Let's go ahead and find D here, okay? Let's look at that. So our little formula thing says that D is going to be the value B over 2A. Okay, you need to know these. And this, form, this method is going to help you. What I'm showing you here will help you to graph the, the functions that we're going to get into for graphing quadratics. It's going to be a lot easier if you know what I'm doing right now. Okay, so hold on to this. Snap a picture of it if you can. Pause your video and get your snipping tool and get a picture of the square that I have outlined there in black. So, okay. So we're going to go ahead and plug it in. Here's, okay, D. Right, and actually, let me use a different color. I'm going to do this. Okay, we'll have green. So now D is going to be B, which is negative 1 over 2 times A, and A is 2. Okay, which is what? Ah, oh, no, 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 stop. Okay. Oh, please don't stop working. Hold on, let me pause the video. <laughs> Again. Okay, so we will have what? Negative one fourth, right? Negative one fourth. So save that for in a minute. Okay, now let's get E. Okay, so so there was D. And now let's get E. Okay. Now E is gonna be what? C excuse me, let me get the color. Okay. E is going to be C minus, and we have two, two terms here to, to do, you know, B squared over 4A. E has a little more meat to it, but it's not so bad. Once you, get, once you practice this, you're going to realize it's a lot simpler than it seems when you first are, are shown it. It's the practice that really gets you knowing it a lot better. Okay, so what is C? C is negative 15, right? So we put the negative 15 there minus, now b squared, we want to put parentheses and a squared, let's put the negative one inside of that, now 4 times a, that's 2, okay, all right, so let's simplify this, negative 15, and we have minus, now we have positive 1 up there, and over 8, okay, let's get a common denominator real quickly, let's see, let's get a calculator, all right, get a calculator on the job. So we have negative. Okay, we want to make sure we have over 8, right? All right, so 8 times 15. Go ahead and get that. Okay, let me get that on my calculator. I'm sure I could do it by hand quickly, but I want to not have it. I don't want to make any simple mistakes after that. <laughs> All right, so 120, okay? 8 times 15, let me get my pen. Where are you? 120. Okay, so now you want to go ahead and add or combine your numerators, right? So we have, what, negative 121 over 8. Okay, so here's the deal. Let's go back up to that format, okay? In the format, we're trying to turn it into this format, so... What happens with our original equation is we're going to put in a D and our E, right, which is this. Not pretty, but um, it's okay. All right, so the new, let me come over to the left over here, okay? So the new version of our equation is this. It's going to be, well, let's see, A, which is 2, and we have X plus d, which is negative one-fourth, or so we can actually write minus one-fourth squared plus e, or what, minus 121 over 8. Okay, why did she do that? What's the point, right? You got to equal zero here. You could just do zero factor property, right? We just did that, by the way. Here's how. This is why. Because eventually you're going to want to use what's called a square root method, okay? 
So if we add 121 over 8 to both sides, and just keep it like that for now, okay, trust me. Okay, it'll cancel here on the left, and we'll have this. We'll have 2x minus 1 fourth squared equal to 121 over 8, okay? Now I want to divide everything by 2. I'm trying to get that squared part, that binomial squared. I want to isolate this part right here. This is squared, and I'm about to show you the square root method in a sec, combined with this, which is really what I want you to know. And you'll be presented with problems that are just like that, okay? So dividing by 2 is similar to multiplying 1 half, right? Everybody agree with that, I hope? So what do we have? X minus, this is kind of a tough example for your first square root method, but I'm going to make them simpler in a sec. Okay, I'll try to hurry through this. So now we have what? 121. We're multiplying. So you just multiply numerators and denominators. 121 over 16. And now what you can do is take the square root of both sides. So let's make a little note. Now you can use what's called the square root method which I listed up top, but um, I knew we'd kind of derive it here. Square root method, which says this, okay, watch. Which says if I have a squared equal to b, then I can solve for a by taking the square root of both sides, watch. Then a, right, the square root of a squared is a, will be plus or minus the square root of b. Okay, so I can take the square root of both sides here, okay? So what I'm going to do is put square root on the left side of this equation. I'm going to go square root of the left side. If I do that to the left, I have to do this to the right. Just like when you add something to the left, you have to add it to the right. If you square root one side, you have to square root the other side. So now, the square root of something squared, let me kind of highlight what I'm saying. The square root of something squared is just whatever is being squared, right? So we can take this highlighted yellow part out. So this becomes just x minus 1 fourth. Okay? Okay. And then the left side, okay, we have a square root of two perfect squares that are in fraction form. And remember that you can do this. Let me show you. You can actually do this. Square root of 121 over square root of 16. Now, 121 is 11 squared, okay, by the way. So let's bring down our left side. This will be 11. Square root of 16 is only 4. 4 squared is 16, right? So the square root of 16 is 4. And now we can, it's much simpler now. So just add 1 fourth to both sides. 1 fourth plus 1 fourth. Okay, and actually you can just put it over here. Okay. And so now it goes away on the left, and x is what? Now x is 12 fourths, or what? 3. Okay, go up to the top. That was one of our solutions, right? I forgot to do plus or minus. Let me do that. Okay, this should actually be plus or minus, plus or minus, which means this. Okay, so let me kind of come here, and I'm going to back up a little bit and show you. This is okay. It's still correct, by the way. Just We just are missing one of our solutions. What happens here is I have x is equal to plus or minus. Let me write this. I'm going to write it off the back. We're going to have 1 fourth. There you go, Karen. Plus or minus 11 fourths. Okay. So note this. Look at this, plus or minus. This is really two different numbers. It's positive and it's negative. So what I just was talking about just now is what I need to do when you're, there's a plus or minus is I need to kind of separate my solution into two things. This could be 1 fourth plus 11 fourths, which we already got as 3. There's my 3 solution. We got this. We know what the answers are going to be because we did this up top. And 
the other one would be x is 1 fourth minus 11 fourths, which is what? x is going to be what? Negative 10 fourths? Or actually, is that right? Let's see what I did. Should be negative. Yeah, that's right. Negative 10 fourths. So negative 10 fourths, which is reducible to negative 5 halves. And these are the two solutions I got. So remember when you see the plus or minus thing. Now, here is a basic example of the square root method, okay? A good, easy example. Let me make sure I'm not going to intrude on the quadratic formula too much when I get back to that. Okay, quickly an example. I'm going to say use square root method. Okay. And then I'll just kind of dot, dot, dot it to solve the quadratic. Okay. <clears throat> Oh, let me get to my examples. Okay, so example, I may just have A. All right, go here and come on, go back, go back. Here we go. All right. So let's say I have a basic example that looks like this. Let's have, um, let's do 3x minus 1 squared is equal to 4. Okay? I'm going to do two examples with you right now. Okay? Alright, so 3x minus 1 squared is equal to 4. What you want, okay, for square root method, you want to, here's the steps. I'm going to write that on the right. Let me kind of make some more room, I think. I need more room. Okay, so here are the steps for the, the square root method. It's quite simple. Not too bad. Okay, number one, you want to isolate the squared part. The squared part. Yeah, okay, I see hands. Okay, let me see you guys. I was going to town. Yeah, it is on the homework. You do have square root methods on there. That is correct. That's right. Okay, um, give an okay so is that what y'all were saying? That's it? Yes, it is on the homework, most definitely. I put all the hands down right now so I could make sure everybody's got fresh hands. If y'all still need me to answer something, I want to make sure. So you isolate the squared part, okay? So we have this. That's what we have in this problem, okay? It kind of starts out. Notice the binomial squared is isolated, okay? And then part two, okay? Oh. I can hardly see my little cursor here. Once you have the squared part by itself on the left and the other number, whatever it is, on the right, you don't have to have any zero on one side. You've got to have just the squared part must be on the left. That's the setup of this. Then you can take the square root of both sides. And let me just do the symbol for you. I'm going to write abbreviate but using the symbol. So you'll square root both sides of the equation. Okay, must be both sides. Okay, so what does that look like? That looks like this, okay? We're going to take the square root on the left. We'll have what? In the parentheses, everything that was on the left, right? The squared part. Okay, and we'll put our 4 and we'll take the square root of that. So this is what I just did, okay, to this side. Okay. So I did square root on the left, square root on the right, okay? So now we go to the left and we say, okay, when my, since the index of a square root is square, right? There's an imaginary 2 there, matches this exponent, I can extract the part that's being squared right there. So what comes out of this on the left is just what's in the parentheses. So 3x minus 1 can dance right out of that big blob of stuff right there in the last step. Important thing here too is the right side. This is not the principal root. This would be all the roots, square roots. So the square roots, everything that would multiply up to be a positive 4 would be a plus 2, which would squared would be a 4, or a negative 2, which if I square negative 2, I get 4. 
So we have to put all the roots. That's what the plus and minus is all about. Okay? And so just remember that this is, this is negative 4 and positive 4. Okay? Plus or minus. All right? So now let's go on with this. And so we have to now solve it like we're used to doing. Okay? We're going to add 1 to both sides. Okay? And what you're going to do here when you add 1, though, is you're going to put this one on the front. So just remember how I moved the plus or minus part off the back? This is why it's much easier to kind of look at your plus minus this way. Okay, so when you are going to add the 1 or whatever you're bringing over to that side in an effort to get x by itself, you want to put the plus or minus part off the end, okay? That's important. And now we'll divide by 3, okay? And so we'll have 1 plus minus 4 all of it over 3, okay? And so here's how this is going to go, okay? We're going to separate it out now, okay? So we're going to have x can be, let's see, 1 minus 4 over 3, okay? And actually, I'm just going to do them side by side, not up and down like that. All right, and let's see, or x can be 1 plus 4, over 3. So what are my two solutions now? X is going to be negative 3 over 3 is what? Negative 1. So there's one of them. I'm coming to your question in a sec. And then we have 5 over 3, which is done. Let me see the question in here. Were we supposed to take the square root of 4? Yeah, that's what I, oh, did I not see that? I think I was too, yes, we were. Man, I'm going to have to edit this video. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, we would have done that. Yes. Oh, my gosh. I went on autopilot. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, that's correct, ma'am. So sorry about that. I totally was on autopilot. Thank you. That shows me, y'all. It makes me kind of proud of y'all because y'all are, like, paying some good attention. Yes, ma'am. The square root of four is two. That was awesome. Thank you for that. Okay, so plus or minus 2, just wherever you had the 4, put the 2 after that, after this step, wherever I'm doing it, you see. Thanks. I appreciate that, you guys. And then, of course, we have to adjust the final answer here, which is not too bad. Okay. So, yeah. So, square root of 4 is now plus or minus 2, and we started solving as we usually would to get x by itself by adding one to both sides here. Okay, and then we have 3x equal to, remember I said to put the 1 on the front, and all your, you will want to put your plus or minus portion hanging off the back, okay? So that kind of gets hung off the, the end at the end, on the right. Okay, and so then we divide by 3 to get x is equal to 1 plus or minus 2 over 3, and so back to this, let's have, separate that plus or minus out, right? So we have the minus and the plus. It doesn't matter if you put the plus first or the minus first. You just separate them out. And so now 1 minus 2 will have negative 1 third, okay? Or what? 3 thirds, right? Or what? 1. So this is 3 thirds. I'm going to go ahead and put the answer here. Okay? So here's my two solutions. Negative 1 third and 1. Okay. So let's move on now. <clears throat> this is basically the square root method. Let me hurry up and do one more example of this with you, and this will be pretty quick. In this one, you'll notice that on the right side, the 4 was a perfect square, and eventually we took the square root of it. So um, what if it doesn't work out that way, okay? So let's go to a B where it's not so pretty. They don't work out just right like that. Let's see. Let's see what if we have something like this, okay? Maybe I'll have 2 x plus 5 squared minus 3 is equal to 0. Almost looks like they want you to do the zero factor property, but no. We have it almost to the point where we have the square part, right? We can put this into a form where we can use the square root property. So what you're going to do here is you're going to isolate the squared part. Like it says, go through the steps up above, okay? And look, actually, I can minimize this a little bit so you can see the steps while we're doing this. Okay? So we want to isolate the square root part, right? So let's go for that. 
Let's do that. To do that, we will we're going to first add the three to both sides, right? And then we'll divide by two. So bit by bit, you want to start picking off these extra parts. So let's add three to both sides first. See what happens. Okay. And so um, we'll get what? We'll have the two, the x plus five squared, right? And the threes go. So now it's equal to three. Next, you want to, what's, what's stopping me from square rooting both sides is this 2 that's multiplied. So I want to divide both sides by that 2. So I'm going to divide it off, and it goes away on the left by cancellation, right? All right. And so what do we have left on the left side is x plus 5 squared, okay? and then equal to 3 halves. Now we have the squared part isolated and I can put in my square root symbol. You can now either write it again or you can you can just kind of put the square root if you'd like to. So if I do the left, I got to square root the right. Now you'll notice the square root of 3 halves. I think I must have been thinking of this problem because I, I did. I thought to myself I needed to like do one like this to show you guys how to handle it. So anyway, it, you can't take really the square root of 3 halves, okay? All right, so we're going to handle that in a sec. But look, let me kind of come up here for the next step. We do know this. We can do this. If I have a square root, right, square root, and a, inside of that square root is something squared, I can extract that base of x plus 5. So x plus 5 comes waltzing out, okay, equal to, now we have to put the plus or minus, on our three halves. Okay, and I'm going to handle the three halves in the end kind of separately, okay? Let's go ahead and get x equal to. We subtract 5 from both sides, and we end up with negative 5 plus or minus the square root of three halves. Now, the only problem with this answer is this 2 that's in the denominator, but square rooted, right? If you separate this out, okay, I'm going to, and not the plus or minus, I'm talking about this. Let's take a look at this fraction, the three halves that's being square rooted. I'm going to take this on the side, okay? So I'm going to take this over to the right, okay? And I want to show you guys a little something with this, okay? All right, so square root of 3 over square root of 2, right? That's basically the same thing as square root of 3 halves, okay? The problem lies with the square root, the radical that is in the denominator, okay? This guy's problem. You don't want to leave a square root or any root, a square root, or it's called a radical symbol. You never want to leave one of those in the denominator. It's not simplified, okay? So here's how we handle it, okay? So this is called rationalizing this denominator. Denominator. Okay, here's how we do it. What would make that a perfect square? Another 2, right? A factor of 2. If I multiply square root of 2 times square root of 2, I'll get square root of 4, and I, then I can extra, I could take that at radical sign out of the denominator. But how do I make this happen? By multiplying a form of 1, right? If something is multiplied times 1, the value of it will not change, but the look of it could. That's not a problem, okay? So the solution won't change if I do what I'm doing here. It's called rationalizing the denominator. Okay, so now multiply the top. Can we get a square root of 6, right? Okay, you, can, you just multiply the radicands, right? The numbers inside the radical. Okay, 3 times 2. And now we'll have the square root of 4, which is doable, right? This becomes the square root of 6 over 2. And that's how I want to leave my answer. So now I'm going to take this back into my answer. I like this much better. This is what is considered simplified. Okay, so let's put that back into our answer over there. And so the answer is solution should look like this. Negative 5 plus or minus the new version of that fraction, which is square root of 6 
over 2. Ta-da! And that's your answer. And by the way, that's two solutions, right? You can leave it like this. That's fine. But if ever you need to separate it out, you'll have negative 5 minus square root of 6 over 2, right? Or negative 5 plus square root of 6 over 2. And you might need to go back through this video one more time if y'all need to pause it and rewind it or whatever. I do recommend y'all use that pause function and, and pause and play. Sometimes it's nice to do that. But um, if you've never heard of rationalizing the denominator, this is what you have to do. It just is a rule that says you shouldn't leave any radicals in the denominator if you're asked to simplify. Okay, and so what you then begin to do is rationalize that denominator. I'll do some more, uh, or I'll send some videos about that to, to YouTube for y'all. Let's move on to the quadratic formula. This is a big one. Okay. And so um, I'm going to go to that, and let's see. Let's go back up. Ta -da. Okay. All right. So uh, I am going to zoom in on that so we can just look at it. Okay. We may see a little bit of that other work. But I'm thinking I might have gotten it, pretty much all of it. So here's our quadratic formula, okay? All right, you can see that if you're, and really a better way to write this formula is if you're given the ax squared plus bx, the standard form of the quadratic equation. Okay, then x, the solution to this equation, is this. So kind of like above where it kind of, you're given that little formula version instead of having to learn or remember, remember the whole process of completing the square. You know, this is how you can solve the equation. And actually, you can solve any quadratic equation using this, okay? No matter what method I tell you to do or you're told to do, you can practice your quadratic formula with whatever method or whatever those problems are in the other sections. You can take those problems and use the quadratic formula on those problems as well. Okay? So let's just take a look in here. Let's kind of dissect it. Just like I told you before, you're going to want to do this. You're going to write a little A is equal, a B is equal, and a C is equal summary. Okay? Make sure you write a little summary. Okay? when you do your problems. It will help to take those numbers out of the X's. Okay, separate them out because you do not want to plug an X into the A, B, C, D part of the quadratic formula, okay? That's not how you're supposed to do that. Okay, so let's do an example of this. Let me kind of try to find you a good, nice example. Okay, um, let's see, we could probably use one of these. Yeah, I think I will. Let's take these guys. We had to kind of save for later. And I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, let's see. I'm going to put them over here on the side, okay? And uh, so let's start off with the second one, though, okay? Let me see. I'm going to uh, I'm resize. I'm going to shrink it a little bit and put it on the side. I'm going to rewrite the problems, okay? I'm going to save those. Let's take that second one I have there, okay? So let me do this. Okay. So for our example, let's take the second one here, okay? We're going to look at this one first, okay? This will be A. Example A. Okay, so for our example, we're going to solve using the quadratic formula. Okay, and A will be this, 2y squared minus 3 is equal to negative 5y. Now look, I was told given this, okay, you have to, in other words, if we start from the standard form, is this problem in standard form? You guys tell me, is this in standard form? In questions box, go ahead and tell me, is this in standard form? No, it's not correct. So we need to move everything to the left, 
right? And really, you want to move every, and the reason I'm saying left is because that's where your leading coefficient will be positive. We want to move everything to where our y squared term will be positive. Okay, that's the best way to do it, okay? So to put in standard form, okay? In standard form, we want A to be positive. Okay, I'm going to put prefer. Actually, prefer A to be a positive. Okay, so let's go ahead and add 5y to both sides. So that's how we're going to do that. So plus 5y. Plus 5y, I'll just stick it down there somewhere. We'll put it in line where it goes right now. So what we'll have on the left will be 2y squared plus 5y. I'm going to put it in descending order, right? Straight into to that standard form. And on the right side, these guys canceled, and I'll get a 0. Now I can start picking out my a, b, and c. Okay. I'm going to go back up to the, the formula for you in a sec. Actually, I'm going to rewrite it. I want you guys to rewrite it, too. Let's go ahead and write A is equal to 2. B is equal to positive 5. And C is equal to negative 3. Okay. And so I'm going to rewrite my formula. And, y'all, the best way to memorize the quadratic formula, you have to memorize it, by the way. Okay, so memorize the quadratic formula. So here it is, okay? Given standard form, then x would be the opposite of b, plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2as, right? 2 times a. And here, just to kind of give you some confidence, because I seem to be forgetful today, notice the opposite of b, okay, opposite of b, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Okay? All right, so let, we have our a, b, and our c separated out. Let's go ahead and plug and chug. Ready? Here's how this is going to go. I'm going to change back to my other ink pen. And for this formula, x will be the opposite of 5, right? Opposite of 5 would be negative 5. Plus, minus. Just open a long square root symbol. And don't try to multiply anything up yet. Because if you need to ch go back and check, if you get something wrong or something gets messed up, you do want to go and, and be able to check your plug-in. So just kind of open the sets of parentheses for now. Just kind of do like you're filling in a template like we talked about before. 4, and let's put in an A and a C, so A is 2, C is negative 3, okay, and now all that stuff is over 2A, open parentheses, 2 is, A is 2. So now we're going to go ahead and just start working on what's called our discriminant, okay, and the parts, this is just dissecting this quadratic formula a little bit, okay, and so the discriminant is this portion. Let's see. Let's make this bigger. Okay. Right here. The, the radicand. The part that's under the square root symbol. Okay. And I'm going to highlight this and come out to the side. Right there. Okay. All right. All right. The part I have highlighted here is called the discriminant. The discriminant tells us, it kind of is like the, uh, 
it's the palm reader of the, the quadratic formula, okay, it's the seer. The discriminant tells us what type of, what type of a solution we're going to have. like whether they're going to be real numbers, one real number or two real numbers, or if they're not going to be a real number, maybe there won't be a real solution at all. Okay, what happens is, okay, and we'll say this, the discriminant D is equal to B squared minus 4AC. You might run into some problems where it asks you to use the discriminant to see what type of solution you're going to have, okay? If our discriminant is positive or greater than zero, okay, then we will have, if it's positive, then I'm going to have plus or minus something, right? Then we're going to have two real number solutions, okay, if it's positive. If the discriminant is negative, let's say that's less than zero, right? If it's negative, then I will have zero real solutions, no real solutions, and you'll be able to stop there because we're not going into anything other than real numbers in this class, okay? If your discriminant equals zero, okay, so if it all kind of cancels out and it's set equal to zero, then you will have one real solution. Okay, all right, so it tells you the types of solutions of what you're going to have, how many and what type. Okay, let's go back up to our problem and start simplifying this sucker. Okay, by the way, this discriminant would be what? 25 minus, let's go ahead and say, let's, let's put it on the side over here. Let me make it, I'm scroll to the right for a minute. Okay, so the discriminant in this problem is this, okay, in our problem it's the 5 squared minus 4 oh, five parentheses, times 2 times negative 3 which is what? 25, let's see, 4 times 2 is 8 times 3 is 24 and it's positive because we have a negative times a negative so positive, what, 24 or what, 49 Okay, so we do have a positive number, right? The discriminant is positive real number. And so we will have two real solutions. Two real numbered solutions is what we have to look forward to. So you know what to do in the end of, of simplifying this X, the, the formula plug-in. We're going to have two solutions. We have to separate a, a plus or minus out. That's what that's telling you. So let's go back into our quadratic formula, okay? All right, back to the problem at hand, okay? All right, so shrink it a little bit so we can kind of get back over here. And let me scroll up, okay? There we are, there's our problem. So now I'm going back to the, the plug-in and I'm gonna start sim simplifying. I have negative five. We've already simplified our discriminants, so we have what, square root of 49 over four, okay? Square root of 49 is what? 7, right? So we have negative 5 plus or minus 7 over 4. And now this is where we say, okay, we want to put our x here, by the way. x is equal to. Here's where we want to separate that solution out, okay? So x can be negative 5 plus 7 over 4, okay? Or it could be negative 5 minus 7 over 4. Okay, and so let's go ahead and simplify each one individually. 7 minus 5 is 2, so we'll have 2 fourths, right? Or what? 1 half, okay. Okay, here we go to the other one will be negative 12 over 4, which is what? Negative 3. So x can be equal to 1 half or negative 3. There are my two solutions for this formula. By the way, one more thing, if you get a solution like this, okay, where your square root is a perfect square like that, in other words, there's no square root uh, left in my answer, right, it, it actually extracts beautifully, um, then this could have been factored, okay. 
So we could have factored this, this problem. We could have used factoring. Okay, and um, I'm going to show you that really quickly just to kind of show you what I'm talking about. Okay, the original problem, I'm going to go from where we have standard form. 2x, let's see, 2, 5, negative 3. Okay. I'm saying x. I should have put y. I'm not going to back up for that, though. Just, I'm sorry, guys. I, I'm so used to the, y, the x's, but this should be really y is equal to 1 half negative 3. Okay. I'm going to show you something here, okay? Zero factor property. Okay. Remember the signs were opposite, right? We, could, we had y and 1 half. Why? Uh, you know what? I think I'm going to go ahead and do this another way. I'll go on it. Uh, okay. Okay. No, wait. I'm sorry. Let me do this another way. Let me erase this. I'm going to have to just, let me come back to this because I don't think you have to worry about doing this, what I'm about to show you. I really want to do another quadratic formula plug-in. I'm sure y'all are okay with that. So I'm going to have to knock that part out before I post it. But uh, let's do another problem. Let's take this other one, okay? So 3, negative 13, and 12. Let's do the other quadratic example, okay? So we're going to take this guy and bring it down and make that part B. 3, negative 13, 12. Okay, so B, we're going to have 3x squared minus 13x plus 12. We go up there and check this real quick. Yeah. Okay. So let's take this one and use the quadratic formula for this. Okay. And we said that every time we want to go, every time you're going to go to use a formula, we want to write that formula so we remember it. Okay. So remember that when you're given the AX squared, and you don't have to write this part, but for the sake of our video and not having to scroll up and down, I'm going to write it. If you're given standard form, then the solution of your quadratic is given by this. The opposite of B, plus or minus square root of B squared minus 4AC, all over 2A. Okay? All right. And so, um, quickly, let's look at the discriminant just to kind of give us an idea of what kind of solution we're going to end up with. Okay. So the discriminant is the B squared minus 4AC. Let's go over here on, on the, to the problem, okay, and I'm going to separate out my A, B, and C. Okay. In this one, it's in standard form, so I can start separating out. A is going to be 3. B is negative 13. C is positive 12. Okay, so the discriminant, okay, so let's do the discriminant here. Um, I could do it down here on the side. The discriminant for my problem, let me section off my uh, formula part. The discriminant for my problem here is going to be something squared minus 4 something something, right? Okay, so B is negative 13. Let's make sure we put the negative in the parentheses. A is 3. C is 12. And then go for it with simplifying. So we have, what, 169. And then we have 12 times 12, which is 144. Okay. And so subtract. Okay. Oops. Wait. Uh, wait, I keep doing something wrong with my calculator here. And yes, I am using a calculator for that, sadly, but it's okay. For the sake of the video, I am totally going to, while I'm doing this, you guys should be doing it, by the way. Go ahead and get it. Simplify it, and you see if you can see what type of solutions we're going to have. Okay. All right. You should have 25 for your discriminant. Okay. So D is 25, which is positive, right? So it's greater than zero or positive. All right. Which means I'm going to have two real number solutions. 
Okay, so now we know what to expect, okay? And we have a very large chunk of this formula simplified. So let's plug it in, the whole formula now. Okay, we have the opposite of B. Now check it out, it's going to be the opposite of negative 13, which is positive 13, plus minus the square root of our discriminant, which I can just put in 25 now. We simplified that already. We plug the B square minus 4AC. We did that part down there, down here on the lower right side of your screen. Okay, so now, um, and look, let me just highlight that for you too, so you see that I have that, okay, right there. Okay, all right. Um, and so let's finish up. The bottom will be 2A. 2 times 3. So let's go ahead and start simplifying. We'll have 13 plus or minus the square root of 25 is what? 5. That's not always going to work out as a perfect square for you guys. And it could be square root of 3 or something like that, which you'd have to leave it as the square root of 3. And that's okay. Okay, and I'll kind of show you how to suss out one of those in a minute. Okay, so now we have what? 13 plus 5 over 6 or 13 minus 5 over 6. Okay, so what's that going to be? 18 over 6 or what? 10, oh, excuse me, what am I saying? 10, 8 over 6. Okay, and so my two solutions finally end up being, so x is equal to what? 3 or 4 thirds. And you want to leave your improper fractions just like they are. Leave your answer just like that. Do not have to change it to a mixed number. Leave it like that. Here are my two solutions. They're both real numbers. <clears throat> okay. So um, let me show you something. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. I wanted to get this other. I'll do one more example using the quadratic formula. In a second, uh, yeah, let's go scroll down and we'll do example C. This will be final use of my quadratic. And the reason I'm laying hard on the quadratic formula, again, I'll say, is because you can use it to solve any quadratic equa equation. And that's kind of good to know, isn't it? Good to know if you forget how to do, if you're having trouble with factoring, if the ones that say factoring method, you guys use your quadratic formula. You at least check your work using your quadratic formula. I know you're thinking, it's like doing a whole new problem. So what? You know, if you know that that's going to give you the answer every time and it's a, it's a tried and true proven formula, okay, then why not, you know? So um, let's see. All right. Let me find us a good one here. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, oh, I got one, okay, so let me see, I'm going to have, let's do x squared, I'm going to keep it in standard form to save time too, so um, minus 3x plus 1, okay, equal to 0, okay, let's check out the discriminant, okay, remember, and let me switch colors now, I'm going to write it all in green now, the formula, Okay, our formula says what given standard form x is negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. All right. And so let's just take a look at the discriminant quickly. Okay, b squared minus 4a. Okay, and over on the left, let's take our a, b, and c out. Now we're back to the problem. A is 1, B is negative 3, C is 1. Okay? And so the discriminant for this problem is going to be what? Parentheses squared minus 4. Excuse me, I forgot to put my C from a discriminant there. Okay? So what? We're going to have 4AC. Okay, so what is B? Negative 3. A is 1, C is 1, okay? 
So what is it? 9 minus 4. And so we'll get what? We're going to get 5. Okay. So it's positive. Again, I'm going to have two real number solutions. But what you notice here is my discriminant is not a perfect square. And that's okay too. Let's go ahead and plug into the formula now, okay? Here comes our quadratic formula. The opposite of b, or the opposite of negative 3, is 3, plus or minus. And so we have the square root of 5, right? The discriminant kind of gets right that put in there, okay? And so over 2a, which is 2 times 1. So now this one was like a lot less work, but look what do we do here. We go 3 plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2. Since my square root of 5 is not something I can combine with 3, because what we had to do before when, it's, when we could extract the perfect square numbers from the square root, we knew we could combine it with that first number, so then we separated it out and did that. Here we can't do that, so you actually would be able to leave your answer like this if you wanted to. Except if the problem, now if you run into a homework problem or a practice problem anywhere else, if you're looking up more practice, you can always remember for yourself that this is um, this is two different problems, this is two answers, you know, if we separate it out into the plus and minus, it actually what it looks like this, okay, this is, can, could be 3 minus square root of 5 over 2, or 3 plus square root of 5 over 2, oh, x equal. Okay, so just do remember that, but you can leave your answer in one single statement as long as you have the plus or minus in it, and it's understood that there are two solutions there. Okay, let's get to a quick word problem. Um, let me get one out of the homework book that kind of goes along with y'all. Um, right quick, let me see. Let me look at the homework assignment to make sure and get one that's lining up with y'all. Okay, let's kind of go here. And, okay, let's see, homeworks, let me go back, and there it is, okay, that's it, coming up, okay, let me kind of, uh, yeah, okay, go back, okay, we have some here, here's one, that's, this is a good one, let me see, oops, Okay, <clears throat> it's coming. Oh, wait, I have it here. Uh, right here. Okay, let me take a look. No, no, no. Okay, the age problems are not so bad, though. We'll see. I'm probably going to have to knock one or two of those out, so let me stick, let me do one like 20. Okay, yeah, this is not so bad. Okay, all right. Let me find one over here, okay? Let me come down here. Um, hold on, guys. Okay. Let's see. We're going to use... There we go. We've got a whole page of them. Okay, yeah, that's the one I wanted to take right there. Let's see. Okay, right there. All right, so I'm going to take that one in, okay? Take a new snip right here. All right, so let me take this guy, I'll copy it, and we'll go into our lecture. All right. Let's take a look at this, okay? And this is kind of what I like to put, okay? And so... um. If we look at this, we have a rectangle has an area of 80 square centimeters. And look, stop me if you have one that you preferred me to look at. I don't know exactly the one you wanted to look at. Let me open the questions box to be sure. Um, <laughs> okay, so yeah, I'm not sure exactly. Okay, all right. So let's just take a look. They're, they should be set up very similar to one another. Just remember, they may be referring to different methods. So I'm going to go look a little closer and make sure none, none of them refer to completing the square. All right. 
So let's take a look at this. And uh, since I'm not going to completing square off of y'all's assignment, if for those of you who came late. Okay. So we have a rectangle whose area, okay, is 80 square centimeters. Okay. Now remember that area of a rectangle is what? Length times width. Okay. So right away we know something's going to be multiplied, right? And they're saying that the dimensions, in other words, the length, one of these is length and one of these is width. So we can say that this is the length and this is the width. Okay. So this is the length. This is the width. Watch. I'll write them right here. Okay. So length we can say is x plus 2. We can say width is x minus 5. Okay. And so what you have to do here is just set it up like that, okay? So we'll have 80 for area, right, is equal to length times width, which we're going to multiply these two things, okay? Now, what happens here is it's nice. It looks like you have some factored stuff already, but you really kind of have to do a little more work than that. It can't be that easy, okay? This is not, not anywhere near standard form, is it, okay? <clears throat> By the way, you guys, you could even write it like this. We could swap sides, which would be simpler for this. So let's go ahead and put the stuff that contains X is on the left. Okay, and we'll put our 80 on the right. Now what we need to do to get this thing in standard form to solve this, and you can see that it's going to be quadratic. So what you want to do here. Remember this, number one, you want to have AX squared plus BX plus C equal to zero. You need zero on one side, right? And if I'm going to subtract 80, I want to have something I can subtract it from. So I'm going to have to FOIL the left side, okay? So from here to here, we'll have to FOIL. We need to multiply it out, right? I'm saying first outer, inner, last. We have to multiply it. Okay, so let's multiply that left side and get that into something I can combine 80 with when I subtract it. So what will we have? We'll have x times x is x squared. Okay, to outer and inner we have negative 5x. Inner is plus 2x. And then finally negative 10. And all that's still equal to 80. So let's combine those center terms, right? Negative 5x and 2x. And I'll get x squared minus 3x minus 10 equal to 80. Now that's a little better, right? Now I know I can subtract 80 from both sides and I have something to, to combine it with, right? The constant term. Because 80 itself is a constant. So let's do that. Let's subtract 80 from both sides. Minus 80 on the right, minus 80 on the left. Okay, so we have what? x squared minus 3x minus 90. And this guy's canceling on the right, and we have 0. Now we got standard form, right? We have the descending order on the left, and we have a 0 on the right. Okay, if you don't feel like sitting there writing out factors of 90, we can always regret, we can always kind of go back to that quadratic formula. Okay, and let's go ahead and just use a quadratic formula. Okay, and so um, here we are. Let's do it. Let's go for it and let's use the quadratic formula. And now we'll, from here to here, what we're doing is, let me kind of do that. Okay, oops, right my pen. Okay, and all right, go on, right pen. Okay. From here to here, we're going to solve using one of our methods, solve the quadratic. Now that it's in standard form, and let me put, because we have, and I'm putting standard form in parentheses because we have it in standard form, we can solve it. Okay. All right. So now we can, um, Go ahead and say, well, A is equal to 1, B is negative 3, and C is negative 90. 
and then x would be what let's make sure we know our we remembering our um make sure you are remembering your quadratic formula which is what x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a and look i'm going to plug everything in i'm not going to go to the discriminant first i'm going to show you this will be one time when you're going to see me plug it all in okay including the discriminant stuff so the opposite of b is what the opposite of negative 3 is 3 plus or minus and now we're going to go ahead and plug in under here we'll have what something squared right b squared minus 4ac. Let's go get those values and put them in now. So we have negative 3, that's b, and then a, then c, right? So 1 and c is negative 90. So let's kind of make a little room for negative 90. Oh, I hope it's scratched. I'm sorry for the scribble. There we go. Negative 90. And if you have to kind of elongate the lines, that's okay. And so we'll have 2 times 1. Okay, so you might want to like break out the calculators again real quick just to kind of get that radicand simplified. Okay, and by the way, let's kind of write out the next step. Let's get it started here. X is, and this is going to have to be our last example. If you run across something that gives you trouble, you guys get in touch with me. Text me. You have my number. I can't give it out on here because we're live. You know, people, other people will be able to see the video. This is going to be, by the way, plus 360 over 2. Yeah, let me know. I'll come and help you. Well, we can meet in the view or over the phone, whatever we have to do to help you out. Okay, we're going to get you some help. I will help you figure some stuff out. You just got to ask. Okay, let me see my question box. Okay, Megan, I'm going to have to come back to you on that one because I'm running out of time. I'll, I'm going to help you right after this, okay? Okay, all right. So now what? 369 is under this radican, right? radical sign. So i got to kind of hurry. We're supposed to keep it around an hour. I think we're way over. So x, x is equal to 3 plus or minus square root 369, which is divisible by 3. So I'll show you why I said that in a sec. So we want to kind of look at the number 369, by the way, and see if there are any perfect square factors. Let's kind of take that off over here. Look at this. Okay. So I'm going to come over here with this to decide how I can simplify 369. I'm going to just factorize it. I want to break it down into all its factors. Okay. So what is it three times? So let's take 369 divided by 3, 123. Are there any perfect square factors in here? Okay, by the way, 123 can also be divided by 3. 41. Oh, look at that. So look what I got. We have this 3, right? And then 123 can be broken down into 3 times 41, which is done. Okay? So what does this end up being? That's like 9 times 41, right? Okay, so if I'm trying to do the square root of that, okay, look, let me go ahead and take our problem down, the, back to the solution. Here's what we can do. x is equal to 3 plus or minus square root of, and this can be thought of as 9 times 41 over 2. 9 can be extracted, right? Let me highlight that, okay? The square root of 9 is 3. So I can take that out of the square root symbol. So x then would be written as this, plus or minus. And so square root of 9 is 3. That goes stays in the plus or minus area, right? And we just tack on the square root of 41 off the back. All that over 2. Okay, no other canceling can be done on this problem, so we have to stop here. By the way, you can separate it out into the plus and the minus separately, but you guys should be okay with that by now. Because I'm running out of time, I'm so sorry, Megan. Megan, um, stick around uh, your computer for a bit, and um, let's get in touch, okay? All right, you guys, 
I'm going to stop here. Um, when you run into some other problems, I'm going to take a look at some other stuff and see what main questions are there. I may try to post that at the end of this other factoring video or at least put some on the line. Actually, I have some stuff with the age-related videos, but um, I'll make sure I have more quadratic-related age problem videos up there for y'all. Anyway, um, Megan, stick around. Viv, stick around. Let me look at that questions box and make sure you guys are not putting something else in there. Okay, I got you. Okay, guys, have a great day.